This video is the result of being asked the question, how do I create black and white images? I like to make that decision prior to any manipulation in Adobe Camera Raw. You'll always find the odd exception to the rule, but generally speaking, it's not a great idea to choose black and white as an afterthought. There has to be a reason to do it. I want maximum control over the exposure, contrast, clarity and the impact and I can achieve that if I make the black and white decision right at the start of the process in Adobe Camera Raw. I also want to select an image that has good composition and interesting content because removing colour is not going to improve on those qualities. They have to be there whether it's colour or black and white. Now my process is pretty standard these days. I always have the smart object status checked in Adobe Camera Raw. We can do that from the hyperlink at the bottom center. And in the workflow, we can tick this little box and it will remain ticked until we decide to untick it. I'm not using the smart object status quite as often as I used to, but it costs me nothing and it's there if I need it. Now here's an image where the colour isn't too bad, but it doesn't add a great deal to the image either. For those not familiar with this sculpture, it's called the Angel of the North, which is found in Gateshead, Tyne and Weir in the UK. And you get some idea of the scale of it with the two lads walking up towards it. I'm going to begin my manipulation at a pretty obvious place, I think. I'm going to go to the top in the edit menu here and click black and white. Then I'm going to click the auto button. You'll notice all of the sliders below have been automatically adjusted. And we can see now that the image has much more contrast and impact. But I'm going to use this as a starting point. Now, as I study my image, I'd like to do something about those bushes on the left, just behind the two figures, and the ones on the right. But I'm going to use AI to do that in Photoshop a bit later. But I also would like to do something with the pathway right in the foreground. I don't think I need all of that, so I'd be thinking about a crop here. So let me come up a little bit somewhere to there. I can't take it out completely because I think it doesn't help the composition. I've got to leave some in and we'll deal with what's left in Photoshop a little bit later on. I'll bring down the top just a touch too, just to give myself a bit more of a panoramic shape. But then I can hit the enter key. My way of working in Adobe Camera Raw, whether it's a color image or a black and white, is generally to do as much work as I can globally, that is the sliders here, which are affecting the entire image. But when I get to a point where I don't think I can take that any further, that's when I turn to strategic editing and I'll do that using the masks, which are phenomenal these days. Now what I tend to do next is to keep my eye on the histogram. You'll notice up in the top right we've got a little symbol there that's currently white. That's telling me that in some places in this particular image I'm losing my highlight detail. And we've got a similar one at the top left which we can see light up if we push the blacks too far. But what I'd like to do here, I'd like to put more impact into the picture globally. So I'm going to drop down the exposure. You can see it shuts off that highlight nicely for us. But it's too far and it takes us into the blacks and I'm losing some detail there. But given the nature of the image, we don't have to worry about these lighting up when it's only minimal. And what I mean by that is... In an image like this, there's bound to be the odd few pixels which are almost pure black and it's not going to affect the quality or the appeal of the image. But again, all of these changes are pretty much personal. But I'd like to take it down as far as I can. The next thing I'd like to do is to see if I could push up the appeal with the side light on the grass, the 
Sun is fully out in the sky, just behind the main body of the Angel of the North. But I can't make changes down here globally because it's going to affect the entire image. So what I'm going to do here is go to my masks. I'm going to select a linear gradient. Move on to the picture, click and drag. There we can see the color effect that tells us which part of the image we're going to affect. I'll let it drift into the sky. And as soon as I start moving the sliders for this particular mask, the mask will be removed. So what do I want to do here? Well, maybe I want to put a bit more exposure here, maybe a little. And then down to my blacks and whites, because if I make the blacks a little blacker and the whites a little whiter, that tends to have the effect of making that more contrasty. So let me push that across. You can see I go quite a way before the little light lights up at the top right. So I can back away from that a little bit if I want to. And I can do the same with the blacks, but the blacks I can't go too far, but I think I'd be darkening the foreground anyway. So I'm going to drop that a little bit to the left. I've got my eye on that little light at the top left of the histogram, but it's a calculated movement of that slider. What I'm doing at this stage is I'm looking for weaknesses. Now, if we look at the right hand third of the image, you may notice that in comparison to the left, it's a little bit lighter. So what I may want to do here, or I'm certainly going to give it a try, is to put a linear graduated mask on there and try to do something with it. Now we can go back to the masks and once we create one mask then we select others from this little white cross in the blue circle but there's some good shortcuts here but for now I'll go back and select my linear gradient and I'll click and drag from about there into the center. I'm fortunate here I think because I've got a subject that's quite dark and demanding in the center of the picture so if I make it darker it's not going to be a big deal is it but what do I want to do with the highlights or the lightness on the right well let's take the highlights down a little bit let's take the exposure down a little bit looking at the left hand side trying to get a little bit of balance there and what I may even do is do a little bit at the top as well. So let me turn to the shortcuts this time. G is the shortcut for a graduated filter or a graduated linear mask. Click and drag. You notice that I've got it rocked over so it's matching the angle of the angel of the north. Because all I want to do here is maybe take down the exposure just a little bit at the top. Now we could afford probably to go even a little more, but maybe not with that particular gradient because we can add more than one gradient. So if I touch the G key again and click and drag just a little bit this time, maybe I can just make the top a little bit darker just so that it balances. I'm gonna to touch the V key, which will bring back the bounding box so I can actually bring it down a bit further and I can see the effect as I move it. And what I was about to say was, I want to be able to balance this and give a bit more of a darker top so that it works just as well with the base. Now there's one or two areas I think I'd still like to darken a little bit, but they're in the left area and maybe around the right area here. Maybe I can turn to a brush. Remember, these are just suggestions. There's no rights and wrongs here, but from the masks, I'm going to select a brush. I want to affect the highlights a little bit. I want to affect the exposure a little bit. I need my brush quite large. I'll use the square bracket keys on the keyboard to do that. And I've got the flow of this tool set quite low. So I can just paint in these areas and make quite subtle changes and you may even have some difficulty in seeing them, but I hope you can. Just subtle changes around the edge. There's a little light point right in the center of my sky. But at this particular stage, maybe we could do with what I call a timeout. 
save what we've done so far if we click the done button down at the bottom right we can move away from our computer we can come back later and pick this up exactly where we left off good idea to do from time to time but also to have a timeout and decide have I done enough have I done too much what needs more work what needs less now I'm reasonably happy with my monochrome I think it's got quite a bit of impact and I think we can do a bit more work in Photoshop so I'm going to go to my detail section hit the denoise because that's the area I'm going to approach next this was shot at 100 ISO so we shouldn't have a great deal of noise but we'll put the little marker over the people and as I click you can see a little bit of noise and with the default setting of around 50 we do get a nice improvement so I will enhance that and what Photoshop is doing is creating another copy of this particular image and we will see it if we were to look into bridge but as soon as that's completed its circle I'm going to open this image up into Photoshop now once the image is open you can see the little symbol on the bottom right corner of the thumbnail tells us that this is a smart object what is a smart object well it's retaining the raw status of this particular image so as I look at this in Photoshop if I suddenly decide I want to lighten somewhere or darken somewhere or make any changes in Adobe Camera Raw if I double click the thumbnail we're straight back where we left off we can make changes here which are not going to impact the quality of our image but I want to move on and do some work where the smart object status may be a bit of a problem so what I could do is just right click make a new smart object via the copy then I could right click again and I could rasterize the layer so if you like I've got a bit of insurance up my sleeve here and I've got an image here which I can move on with because the first thing I'd like to do is to deal with that pathway down at the bottom right corner now I need to make a selection of the area I want to repair but before I do that because we're working on a monochrome here to make sure that the AI works well I'm going to go to my image menu mode and I'm going to switch to RGB and I'm going to say no don't merge keep all of the layers as I've got them there but if I don't do this then when I make the selection the AI will give me a little warning message so with the polygonal lasso tool selected there is the pathway down at the bottom so I just make a quick selection around it as you can see doesn't need any super skill here go up to the top of the page here click into the AI and touch the enter key now I'm pretty confident that this is going to do a pretty good job but if you look over to the right hand side you can see we're actually being given three different versions of the repair we've asked for which is just to fill that in using the surrounding area and there we've got a pretty good result I think nearly all of us could live with but I can select the next one and if I felt it was better I could live with that and I can select the next one and if I felt that was better I could live with that to be honest I don't think there's anything to choose between them but you'll also notice that Photoshop creates that repair on a new layer so it's done a pretty good job with that so what I'd like to do is have a go at those bushes on the left hand side in exactly the same way there's the layer that we're working on at the moment I'm not even sure I have to select it with AI to be honest but if I go back to my tools again and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see more clearly I'm going to make a selection along here I want to retain those shadows if I can then up and over the top because I feel this is going to do a pretty good job too so let's have a look at our three versions which one do we like best I think I like the third one best so I'm going to do the one on the right hand side while I've got things working in my favor touch in the spacebar key click and drag to the right hand side and with the same tool I'm going to select this side let's see if AI can do the same here for us well 
Well, that's a little bit odd there, but let's have a look at the next version. And the next version, to be honest, I think I can live with the version on the right hand side. Reminding you again that all of these changes, let me hit Control zero, are all placed on a new layer. But if I'm happy with that, then I can save this or I can flatten all of these layers together. Although I've saved this as a smart object, I haven't needed it. And of course it is still safe sitting in Bridge, so I could still go back to this and reopen it. But here, I'm going to flatten the image. So in any manipulation like this, there are some rights and wrongs, but there's also a huge amount of personal choice. And that, my friends, is why photography is an art. The decision to remove colour simplifies the image. And when we make the right choice of image, the end result should be an improvement. I'll see you next time.